Hi everyone, so I'm going to continue on this topic about the uh, light spectrum, right? And so in the previous video, remember, I distinguished between these two types of spectra, which is the continuous spectrum, which is what you get if you were to take sunlight and you split it into its component uh, light waves. Okay, so if I take a prism and put it on one side and I have a source of uh, white light on the other side, what I'll see is I see this rainbow of colors which is what you're used to seeing when you see a rainbow in, in natural uh, you know in, in your life that's what you see you see a continuous spectrum however if we have instead of a white light we have something like a, a gas let's say like neon light for example the ones that you see in this billboard um, and so it can come in this in this uh, uh, tube uh, that's containing that gas and then you connect this to electricity the gas gets hot and when the gas gets hot, it starts to emit this light. That light could be split also by a prism. And what you see is that instead of instead of seeing a rainbow of colors, what you see is actually you see certain lines. Okay, those lines are showing up, uh, and that corresponds to that specific uh, element. For example, helium will show you this particular set of lines. Barium would show you this different set of lines. Okay, um, the interest in in this line spectrum is particularly has to do with the structure of the atom because obviously if you know the helium spectrum has this type of behavior that tells us something about how the electrons in helium interact with, with each other in a way that actually generates this light so if you remember going back to the black body radiation concept here, there we're talking about the idea that the light that we see from an object that's hot is due to the fact that the electron that's oscillating uh, as a result of it being heated the electron that's oscillating it's oscillating at a certain frequency and that frequency is what we observe as the light that's being emitted okay so we're trying basically to get at what is the structure of the atom in these set of experiments and what people were trying to do is develop some model of the atom that would be able to explain the um, uh, the actual uh, ob you know observation about this line spectrum how can we develop a model that would fit with this observation so one of the things that I want to uh, mention before we actually uh, talk about uh, the uh, talk about the model of the atom that would explain you know our lines in these in these different uh, spectra is to first talk about specifically about the hydrogen atom okay so there's a couple of people who are kind of trying to figure out what it is that's make you know that makes a hydrogen uh, atom have a particular um, you know light waves like this right the, the the four different lines that are observed with the hydrogen and the this experiment was done back in the you know mid late mid to late 1800s so at that time people were already kind of asking the question how did these lines come about and one of the first people actually was this high school teacher who just uh, call uh, Balmer and he figured out that you know you can actually get this frequency to show up if you were to use this factor here if you were to use um, 1 uh, over 2 squared minus 1 over n squared with n being an integer if you multiply this by a constant you can get these lines to show up you can predict what frequency uh, and what wavelength of light would show up uh, in the hydrogen line okay so using this fairly simple equation and so he basically just kind of did it by trial and error he figured out that if he had some kind of a constant and he multiplied that constant by 1 over 4 basically minus 1 over n square where n is a um, an integer then he's able to get the lines in the uh, in the hydrogen uh, lines okay these hydrogen lines here in the visible range the ones that we can see by our eyes to show up okay uh, so that was a fairly uh, you know important discovery but it's it's not he, he couldn't really explain what this constant means why it, it has to be two and so on so uh, a guy by the name of uh, Johannes Rydberg then came up with a more developed form of this same equation uh, so if you remember, Balmer's equation looks like a constant times, you know, 1 over 2 squared minus 1 over n squared. Um, Rydberg came up with a kind of a general, a more general equation, and his equation looks like this. He said that I can predict any uh, wavelength 
in any region, not just the visible region. So remember that with Balmer, it's just the, the visible region. Okay, the visible region is what we could see with our eyes, but we can also, you know, detect lines of hydrogen in other region of the electromagnetic spectrum, which is the ultraviolet region, the infrared region, and so on, my uh, radio region. Um, and he's saying that if you use this equation, which is one over wavelength, right, of the line, one over wavelength, is equal to a constant. This constant is symbolized as RH. It's called the Rydberg constant because he was the one who came up with it. Um, and it's one over n1 squared minus 1 over n2 squared with n1 and 2 being positive whole numbers so 1 2 3 and 4 uh, and so on and then uh, rh having this value right here okay now you want to be a little uh, you want to pay some careful attention here because we're going to talk about the Rydberg constant again and it's going to have a different value uh, and it depends on the unit you use so in this case we're using this unit called the wave number unit which is per meter and it has that value 1097370 uh, per meter. Uh, if you were to calculate using a certain value of n1 and n2 multiplying with this Rydberg constant you're gonna get a 1 over lambda and then if you take 1 over that number then you get the lambda you get the wavelength so in other words you can take this equation and plug in let's say 2 and 3 here at the bottom and multiply by this Rydberg uh, constant if you were to invert that number, you're going to get a wavelength, and that wavelength is going to correspond to one of the wavelengths that you see in the uh, visible spectrum of um, the hydrogen uh, line spectra. Okay. Now we're going to do some examples with this, so don't worry about it if you're not. It's not clear to you right now. We're going to do some examples to illustrate how this actually is done in practice. Now, for the hydrogen emission spectrum. Uh, different people then kind of tested this out because they did the experiment right so they found that if uh, when n1 is equal to 1 and n2 is any number bigger than 1 basically okay you could be 2 could be 3 could be 4 what you find is that you find that all the lambda that's calculated falls in the ultraviolet region of the uh, uh, electromagnetic spectrum okay now the person who actually did the experiment with this is called Lyman. So this this line, the series of lines that fall in the UV region, is often called the Lyman series. But also uh, because you get these lines if you put in n1 equals one. So when n1 is equal to one, a lot of times we call it the Lyman series. We talked about Balmer just now in the previous slide, talking about the fact that when n1 is equal to two, remember with Balmer's equation he put in two here. So if n1 is equal to two all the wavelengths you calculate uh, will fall into the visible region again uh, assuming that n1 is 2 and n2 is any number bigger than uh, n1 okay so I should make that clear perhaps here that n2 uh, is any number that's bigger than n1 It's bigger than n1 okay so let me just make that clear so you uh, understand that n2 has to be a, you know a number bigger than n1 uh, but they're both positive whole numbers okay so if n1 is equal to 2 and n2 is equal to 3 4 5 and so on you, you when you calculate the wavelength you're gonna get numbers that fall in the visible region okay all the wavelengths will be in the visible region this is called the Balmer series and then when n1 is equal to 3 plug in 3 here and then this is 4 5 and so on you're gonna get lines that fall in the uh, infrared region and this is often called a passion uh, series of lines okay so the concept then is you know how how do these lines get generated right what makes uh, the uh, what makes these uh, heated gas generate these lines so the idea is that the electrons that are in the atoms of these uh, elements that are being heated these gases that are being heated they um, actually get uh, receive that energy and they go from what we call the ground state which is the state they were originally in the energy state they're originally in so originally they're at the lower energy state they receive this uh, electricity input that gets them hot and they get this extra energy and they go up to a higher energy level that's called the excited state when they come back down because you can't stay in the excited state forever because that's not you know that's that's sort of like staying in a higher energy state it's unstable so you want to fall back down to the more stable state which is your ground state when you fall back down is when you emit the light 
as a result because energy has to be conserved right so when you fall back down to the ground state your energy goes lower but then that excess energy the difference between the excited and the ground state is emitted as a as a light um, you know as a photon of light okay now so the, the picture you want to have in mind is something like this let's say this is an electron here colored in green initially it's in the ground state uh, there's an input of energy from electricity. This electron jumps up to the top here, to the excited state, and then it uh, has to fall back down to the ground state. We can't stay there uh, continuously, so it falls back down. When it falls back down, it emits this uh, photon, okay, or light wave, and that's what you see as your line. And then it could go up again, as long as you're still providing electricity, this thing could go up again, gets excited, comes back down, generates another light, goes back up, comes back down until you pull out the electricity and there's no more light at that point okay so as long as you keep on providing electricity the cycle continuously go on and on and on forever okay now um, that's kind of the mod that's basically the explanation of how you see this light being generated and then uh, you know how you can actually use Rydberg equation in this case to calculate for the hydrogen uh, emission spectrum, the line spectrum for hydrogen, you can calculate basically different type, the different wavelength values that would show up um, based on using these numbers from Rydberg. Okay? One of the things I want to point out about the Rydberg equation is that even though he developed this equation, he wasn't able to explain why the Rydberg constant has to have this value and why n1 and n2 have to be positive whole numbers. So the, he just knew that this equation fits the data but he doesn't know in terms of a theory. He doesn't have a theory basically to explain why these numbers have to be the way they are. Okay. In the next video, we'll talk about the Bohr model for the atom, which actually provided a, a definition for all of these numbers.